Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Um, those of you who saw my video last night will have seen that I have had to make an unplanned visit to the northeast of Scotland to pick up my son, collect him from a training course because Storm Babette is heading our way. Well, it's actually forward edges of it are here. The winds are due to be hitting 75 miles an hour today and therefore the course was ended early and I've had to come up and pick him up. So, would I make it in one go? Yeah, I made it fine last night. I stopped for dinner at Dundee, even though the car was not fully charged when I set off from work. Stopped for dinner, charged up, and then made it up to Peterhead. So did I make it? Yeah, I made it fine. The car didn't explode, didn't catch fire, I wasn't stranded, the battery didn't die, and I made it fine with one stop, had my dinner, and came up the road. Absolutely fine. Today, however, the storm is here and we are going to have to battle some really really strong headwinds up to 75 miles an hour today so the fuel efficiency is going to be pretty dire i've got or had 40 percent when we set off about 10 minutes ago from uh, peterhead and that is not enough to get home in one go so we stopped at a parking ride uh, at ellen just north of aberdeen and there's a charge place scotland charger here and the car's already at 54 percent so that will get me um, normally quite easily down the road however given the headwinds a better route planner is obviously aware of the weather forecast and it's telling me that I would have to travel at a really slow speed which I might do anyway because of the weather but I just want a bit of an extra buffer here so I'm going to charge the car to about 65% um, and then we'll head off right. so as you can see here there are two possibilities on a better route planner um, one with two charging stops it says it'll be four miles shorter um, and one with one charging stop so that's the one I want to do because I know that stops at uh, Forfar where there's a charging hub and there's a range of places we can have lunch um, or probably a mid-morning snack actually the other one is forecasting going through Aberdeen rather than around the bypass so it's slightly shorter but you'll obviously have city centre traffic and it's wanting to me to do a charge there and then charging at a Tesla supercharger in Dundee. Um, there's not such a great range of places to eat at the Tesla charger so I'm probably going to go with this route here which is slightly longer going around the, the bypass outside Aberdeen um, and then we will stop at Forfar for half an hour. Welcome back to our wonderful Storm Babette journey. We are uh, on the outskirts of Perth, we're in Schoon. And uh, if my cameraman will point at the screen on the car, you will be able to see um, that you don't need to go that close, they're not blind. <laughs> right, so we're in uh, Perth uh, on our Storm Babette journey. Um, car is down at 14%. We're going to arrive at the Ionity chargers with 12%, which is ideal for a nice charge. The battery is at 19 degrees, so it's cooled down quite considerably as we've been driving. And um, the efficiency has been absolutely tanked by the storm. As you can see, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. We've been facing horrendous strong headwinds, and obviously, it's very, very wet. But We'll get into Starbucks and we will charge up the car and then we'll be on our way. Battery is still cold, it's only 18 degrees. Weather's foul, but the state of charge is then at something like 12%, I think it said. Preparing to charge. Yeah, there we go, 13%. So we should get a reasonable, reasonably fast charge here. Good, 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 keep going. Seriously. Eighty four kilowatts. Oh, that's poor. Eighty five. 
Yeah, it's not going to go any faster. I guess it might if it warms up. Not to worry. I need to stop here and grab some food and some coffee anyway. So as you can see, it's uh, horrible outside. <clears throat> Car has been recharged from, I think, 13% back to 72. It took 28 minutes. Battery was still cold, so it was quite a slow charge. Trinity has lost its mind and it still thinks the car is on 49%. I've no idea where it gets that from, but something's clearly going on with the Trinity server. So we're back to the Skoda sat nav and it is telling me that I will get home in 55 minutes time. It's 52 miles to home and I will have 43% battery when I get there. So um, even though it's probably the worst storm I've seen in at least a couple of years, and it's due to hit a red alert which means the police are telling you not to travel this afternoon you can do it in an EV even if you haven't planned the trip and you haven't charged in advance one other thing to note is when we set off from the charge place Scotland charger this morning up in Ellen the battery was at 30 degrees when we got back here it was at 17 and as you can see from here on car scanner the battery is now back up to 35 degrees the thing that really warms your car battery up and gets it nice and hot for a rapid charge is either charging it or doing some yo-yo driving. The traffic conditions this morning meant I couldn't do any yo-yo driving so the car did cool the battery back down which is for the long-term health of the battery however it means you don't get the fastest rate of charge. A lot of people don't understand that and on the new Enyaqs coming from this month onwards apparently they will be a button on the screen which will allow you to manually trigger the uh, battery heating or if you're navigating to an ionity charge point like this it will automatically preheat just the way that Teslas do but for this car with the old software you don't have that option but do you know what we went in there grabbed a hot chocolate each it's Starbucks if you can't see it by the time we had a Starbucks and a muffin it was time to come back out and the car was back at 72% so it's all good